Hey guys, happy Father's Day to all who celebrate and for all who don't, I'm sure the line for milk at the grocery store is just really, really long. Anyways, as some of you may know, I also have a dad and I decided that today I want to celebrate him and so I am going to give a PowerPoint on five things my immigrant dad taught me about life. First off, I want to introduce you to my dad. So, who is my dad? Who really killed? I, I, I think this is the wrong power. There we go. There we go. Uh, who is my dad? He is at least 12 years old. My dad also moved to America in his 20s from Korea. And he also has 10 fingers as well. That's generational nowadays, man. Um, but first thing about my dad is that he really loves sandwiches. And back when I was a little kid, he would make these sandwiches for me where he would get two slices of bread, and in between those slices, he would add ham, a fried egg. And at this point, this is a solid sandwich. You got two levels of protein, and now you just got to finish it off with some condiments and some vegetables. And let's see what my dad does next. He puts onions, cucumbers, lettuce, strawberry jam, mayonnaise, and ketchup. The, the sandwich was horrible. He would make this for me every Saturday morning, and it was so bad. But, but that's one thing about my dad, right, is when he came to America, I think he realized, dang, y'all got some really cool foods here, like strawberry jam that's not actually made out of strawberries, but has hella high fructose corn syrup. That's kind of fire, you know, it's really sweet. But because of that, my dad ended up liking a lot of different things. And when he would make a sandwich, his theory was, if you add everything that you like individually, it'll just make the sandwich the best sandwich ever. So every individual ingredient he added, he was a big fan of, and he would love eating it. And so when he put it all together, he's like, this has to be the best thing, right? Because it has all my favorite things in it. But as you and I both know, jam and ketchup don't really go well together. And so when my dad would make this for me, I wouldn't really eat it. And then he'd get really mad at me, and then he'd beat me. I'm kidding. Don't call CHP or CPH. CPS, CPS, my bad. CHP is California Highway Patrol. I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyways, that's the first lesson that my dad ever taught me, that individually good things combined together do not always make a better thing. You can't just combine everything you like all at once and assume it's gonna be a better thing. Like, I love grandmas and I also love boxing, but imagine I was boxing a grandma. I'd probably get the police called on me. Actually, that sounds kind of fun. Anyway, speaking of sandwiches, do you guys remember scenes like this from the 2000s? If you don't, don't worry, I'm gonna explain it in a second, but if you zoom in, you'll see this guy right there, and that's not who I'm gonna be talking about, but you'll also see this porta potty, and this porta potty signifies something. This is the place where all Subway sandwiches should go because Subway is trash. I'm never gonna get sponsored by them. But back in the 2000s, Subway had these TV commercials that made them somewhat redeemable because what this lady's doing here is not a new karate move because that would be cultural appropriation. Why you Also, wait, have you guys ever considered that Kung Fu Fighting is a super racist song? Sorry, that's off topic. Anyways, uh, no, she's not doing cultural appropriation here. What she is doing is modeling a foot long. Don't they have a site where they put like famous celebrities feet on it? Like, um, they should put mine up there because that's mine right there. Just kidding, I'm not famous. But the reason she's doing this is because back in the day, every single foot long from Subway was $5. They had this commercial that went five, five dollar, five dollar foot long, any, any, any. And the whole point of the ad was to tell you that every single foot long at Subway you could buy for five dollars. And that's just how bad inflation is nowadays, that you can't find a single sub for $5 anymore. But the reason I bring this up was because when I was in middle school, after one of my baseball games, my dad took me out to go eat Subway. And me and my dad, we got a $5 foot long each, and we're sitting there and we're eating because my dad loves Subway because, again, his taste is trash. But my dad and I were the only people in the shop that day, and so we're in the corner eating, and while we're eating, in walks in these two Hispanic men. And they go to the front of the line, and the way Subway works is they make the sandwich that you want. And so these men are trying to order a sandwich, but you can clearly tell that they don't speak a lick of English. And as I'm sitting there and my dad's sitting there, we're watching these two men order and we both realize that not only do they don't speak English, but the person making their order doesn't really speak Spanish. 
and so they're pointing at stuff and then they're asking for stuff in Spanish but the guy who's making it doesn't know what that word means and so they're just adding all random stuff and it's not at all like the worker wasn't trying like let me get that clear here the worker was not trying to scam these people he was genuinely putting in an effort to make the sandwich that they wanted and trying to understand what they were saying but you get to the end of the line and again for context back then a foot long was five dollars these two men they get to the cashier cashier rings up their order and each of their subs is like fifteen dollars because they added so many add-ons that aren't included in the any five dollar foot long section and i'm sitting there and my dad's sitting there and we just kind of realize like that could have been my dad because if you don't understand by now, the thought that was in my head, and it's the same thought that my dad had at the point, was did these men mean to order this much? Like, did they even know what they were doing? Because I don't think they did. I don't think they understood that half the stuff they were ordering were like extra add-ons. Because $15 back in the day, that's like $100 now. Don't quote me on that. But these men didn't look like they had a lot of money. Maybe they did. I hope they did, and I hope I'm wrong. But I just remember sitting there, and they're paying for these two sandwiches, $30. And I just thought of my dad, because I was like, man, when he first came to America, it's not like he knew English. And imagine if he was alone. He was alone. Not having a friend to carry that burden with you, like, that must have sucked. So I don't know. I don't know where those two Hispanic men are today, and I, I hope they're really doing well. But I just remember sitting there and I'm like, man, like, I wish I could help them. I wish I could help translate, but I can't right now because I don't know Spanish. But that's the second lesson that my dad taught me is para siempre aprender más lenguas, to always learn new languages and to never add add-ons because we're Asian and we're cheap. Is that racist now? Maybe. Anyways, my dad does really love Subway, but the thing he loves in the world more than anything else, including me, is kimchi. But the thing I hate more in the world, more than anything else, including my dad, is kimchi. You see, my favorite snack in the world is... Please go on a date with me. California burritos! If you don't know what a California burrito is, it is not just a burrito from California. But, it is a carne asada burrito with french fries in it because we put french fries in everything. The thing about California burritos, though, is that my dad hates them. And the reason he hates them is not because he hates fries or anything like that, it's because he hates cilantro. In case you didn't know, there are a certain amount of Koreans with this like genetic predisposition to like hating cilantro. Like this is a real thing, look it up. And my dad, I think, has that gene where like he tastes that and tastes like soap. The thing is though, my dad knows I love California burritos and ever since I was a kid, he would always take me out to get these burritos, especially if I'm sad or if I've had you know, a big accomplishment to celebrate. And when I would order a California burrito, my dad would never order. He wouldn't eat anything. He wouldn't even take a bite. He would just order one California burrito for me. We'd get our order and he'd sit there with me while I ate. That's the third lesson my dad has taught me. Ever since I was young, he told me never let anyone sit alone for a meal because that might be one of the loneliest feelings in the world. Even if my dad hates where we're going or what we're eating, he'll always show up and just sit there because he believes that people deserve a friend and meals are supposed to be communal. And I've tried to live that out too. I remember one day in high school, there's this one kid at school that would always eat alone. One day in high school, I, I sat with him um, and then he immediately got up and left. <laughs> Maybe I'm the problem. Maybe people don't want to sit with me. But that's besides the point. My dad has always taught me to go and try to make the effort to make sure that nobody eats alone. That's the third lesson. Fourth lesson, though, involves this, as you can see, weird cowhide. Um, if you had to guess what ethnicity owns this type of apartment, what would you guess? Now, I don't want to be racist unless it's towards Koreans because then it's not racist for me to do it. But I would guess it's a white person. Because where else have you seen a cowhide? Who gets cowhides? Not vegans. The only time I've ever seen a true cowhide like this at someone's house just laid out on the floor is in seventh grade when after our baseball season, we had a team party at my friend's house. Uh, actually, he's not a friend. He's just like a teammate. Let's clear distinction here. I would never be friends with someone who owns a cowhide. That's weird. It's definitely not judgmental too because they deserve it. Am I gonna get hate for that? Maybe. But we were at this man's house and yes, he was white. And my dad, especially back then, English was not good. And I just remember um, 
he never really talked to the other parents. Like the kids would hang out, the parents would hang out, but my dad would always just go off and do his own thing. And then at my baseball games, oh, that was supposed to be the slide for white people. Get it? At my baseball games, my dad would not sit with the other parents. He always sat in center field by himself. There were never any benches. He would just stand there and just kind of watch. Like if you zoom in here, there's that guy from the subway ad. I don't know what he's doing there. Um, but yeah, right over there, right over there. That's where my dad would sit. But the reason he would do this was cause number one, I don't think he felt completely comfortable talking to my friend's parents because they were so good at English and he wasn't. Uh, but number two, he also just really liked the view from center field. And the reason he would walk away from the other parents at the team parties was because, I don't know, he thought it'd be more fun just to do his own thing. And that's the fourth lesson that my dad taught me. It's that you don't have to fit in a certain place. You can do what you want. A friend of mine who just turned like 26 or something told me this, but for the first time in his life, he's realizing what it means to have fun on your own because he never thought that that could have been a thing. But let me tell you, it's a thing. If you wanna do something, go and do it. Like you don't have to get other people to do it with you. There is absolutely nothing wrong with just being an individual. That's what my dad taught me. You don't wanna be somewhere, then don't, you know? Go find the fun that you can make on your own. You don't have to fit in. You can stand in center field if you want to. That's lesson number four. But the fifth and final lesson is the most important one that my dad has taught me. And it's that this guy, the subway guy, the one guy, he matters. The way my dad taught me this wasn't through any one particular story, but it's actually through the way that he's lived his life. It's through every single one of these stories. Cause that one guy in the back of the advertisement that nobody notices, that's my dad. No, that's not actually him. Let me, let me get that clear. That, that, that's not actually him. Um, my dad would never be associated with a subway ad because they are corrupt. When my dad has a hard time speaking to my friend's parents and goes off to center field to do his own thing, He's the one guy. And because he knows what it's like to be the one guy and trying to figure out this world on your own and have fun on your own, that's why he always sat with me at every meal. Because he knows that I could be that one guy. And because my dad would never let me eat on my own, when we were at that subway and we saw two other people who seemingly didn't fit in, it helped me see that those two people were that one guy. The thing that I'm getting at here is that, again, the one guy matters. Cause at some point we're all that one guy. And maybe you're better than me. Maybe you're better at getting along with more groups of people. And so there aren't that many situations for you like this, but I guarantee there is at least one situation where you didn't fit in and you were that one guy who just didn't want to be there. I can personally say I've been that one guy many, many times, but I probably haven't been that one guy as much as my dad has. His struggle to fit in at times has broken my heart sometimes. But I think now more than ever, it is strengthened my heart because I see an individual in my dad who has been through a lot and embraced a lot of pain, but that pain has grown him as a person to really care for the one guy, to care for people like me and people who just don't belong in a lot of places. And that's what my heart is for now too. I want to care for the people who don't belong, but at the same time, if we go back to the first lesson, the sandwich lesson, individual things combined does not always make a better thing. And my dad has shown me that too. You can embrace being an individual, you can embrace being yourself and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There is absolutely nothing wrong with being the one guy. What that means is that now when I'm in a situation, I see someone who doesn't seem like they belong or feels left out, it's not necessarily always about me trying to make them belong into a current group, existing group. But now it's more of me trying to understand who they are and what they excel at and, and the person that they want to become and are becoming and me trying to help them embrace that. Because individuals are really, really cool. That one guy is really, really cool and the one guy matters. My dad's a really cool guy. He is incredibly loving and he has sacrificed so much for me. And one last thing, he watches my YouTube videos. So, Appa, happy Father's Day. Sarange. See you guys next time.